Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome again to Yinzer on Hockey. <clears throat> so, wanted to take a look at the teams that didn't make the playoffs in the 2017-2018 season and their current coaching situations and speculations as to um, whether or not they will decide to make a coaching change in, in the off season or if they already have and, and who might be their their next head coach. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and start in the Eastern Conference. Um, the Buffalo Sabres uh, last offseason hired uh, Phil Housley from the uh, Nashville Predators coaching staff. Um, didn't quite have the initial success I think that they were expecting, but they are still mid-rebuild, and I think that Halsey will probably get at least two or three more years to let the, the young crop of talent they have in that organization, as well as the number one draft pick this year, to uh, to come in and make an impact. And I, I think he's going to be pretty safe for the next few years. <clears throat> uh, next we'll have the Ottawa Senators. Uh, their current coach is Guy Boucher. Uh, the former Tampa Bay Lightning head coach. Uh, he's been there for, I want to say, yeah, about three seasons now, two seasons. <clears throat> Took Ottawa to the Eastern Conference Finals last year. They had a pretty disappointing year this year uh, between the the Anderson injuries, um, the Carlson contract trade speculation and, and all that, and the, the fire sell they had at the trade deadline. Um I think Boucher is safe this offseason, and I think he's probably safe again for next year, considering they've pretty much gone into a full rebuild mode. Um, I do look for the Carlson. Uh, Carlson will probably be moved in the offseason, and uh, they'll, they'll use whatever they acquire, whatever assets they acquire from, from his deal to, to help ignite the the rebuild process. Uh, next is the Montreal Canadiens. Um, their situation is always interesting because um, the Montreal fans have very little patience up there. Um, it's an organization that's uh, your, your success rate is, is based on Stanley Cup championships and, and that's it. Um, Current coach is Claude Julien, uh, formerly the Boston Bruins head coach, and it's only his second year. Actually, I think he started midway through last season. Ended up uh, rebounding the Canadians. They made the playoffs, um, and I, I think he's still safe for now. Um, but again, there's you don't get a whole lot of leash. In Montreal, so he could be he could be in dire straits next season if they don't start off um, really well. Behind the Canadians was the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, their current coach is Jeff Blasio. Um, he just finished up his third season as head coach, replacing Mike Babcock from Toronto. Um, they recently extended. Uh, Ken Hall and their general manager's contract, and I think uh, along the same lines, they'll probably keep Blass Hill for another year or two um, to match up with the the Ken Holland contract. I think his was a two-year extension, so I think he's probably safe for the next two years, although I, it wouldn't surprise me if Holland decided to make a move next season um, in order to cement himself some more time with the Red Wings, so he could make a, a coaching change to uh, to help extend his tenure. Uh, behind the Red Wings was the New York Rangers. Um, their coach was Elaine Vigneault. Um, they did let him go 
uh, at the the end of the season. Um, and I think a common consensus among uh, some of the Rangers fans that I, I've talked to and heard from, um, it, it looks like they're looking at Lindy Ruff, uh, who was their bench coach this year, to, to possibly be a potential replacement candidate. Um, but we'll have to see how things shake out as the playoffs evolve more and some of the playoff coaches that get eliminated um, might not be kept in their current role so they, they could become hot coaching commodities. Uh, behind the Rangers was the New York Islanders. Uh, the Islanders current head coach is Doug Waite. He was hired uh, partway through last season. Um, he's a Garth Snow guy. He's, he's been with the the organization for a long time, been around the Islanders organization for a long time. Um, with the Tavares contract situation, um, that's going to change the direction of the Islanders. If he doesn't re-sign, um, they could have to go into um, a full rebuild or at least a, a heavy retooling to replace a guy like Tavares. So, I, I think Doug Waite will be the coach um, for for next season for sure, and possibly beyond that. Um, he he is Garth Snow hired him to steer the Islanders in the right direction. For the majority of the season, they were in playoff contention, and I think that they'll try to continue on that that upward trajectory to get back to the playoffs. And I think Doug Waite will be the guy for them. Uh, next up is the Carolina Hurricanes. Um, they're in quite a tumultuous situation. Uh, Bill Peters did exercise his option to to resign as, as head coach of the Carolina Hurricanes. Um, they removed Ron Francis as GM and then... Uh, yesterday, the news broke that they have terminated his contract as president of hockey operations. So they're going in a full new direction. So I think they'll probably hire their GM first. Um, I've heard a short list of candidates that are possible for GM for them. Um, and a few of them turned down the option to be interviewed during the season, waiting for their off season. So we'll see when Carolina gets to to hire their GM and, and get their head coach in place moving forward. <clears throat> uh, and last team from the East is the Florida Panthers. Florida Panthers' current head coach is Bob Bachner. And the way Florida competed this year, I don't think a lot of people expected Florida to, to be a competitive team with all the changes that they made. In the offseason, letting Marcia so go, letting Riley Smith go, uh, not bringing back Yarmir Yager, so they lost a lot of veteran leadership there. Um, and I think with that young core of talent that they have in place with Markstrom and and some of the other guys, I think Ekblad was another one. They all had really good years, and um, with. Luongo coming back for another year, I think they'll be pretty much all in this year to to make their, their dedicated run to the playoffs. So I think um, Bogner will, will be there to uh, for them at least next year. In the West, uh, Arizona Coyotes, uh, their current coach is... Rick Tockett, they hired him off of the Penguins staff last year. Uh, parts of this year, Arizona looked like a really good competitive team, uh, but it was pretty much too little too late as they started their run late in the season and couldn't recover from their October-November uh, where they were just abysmal to start the season. They have a lot of very good young players. Um, they did miss out on the draft lottery, so they'll be drafting fourth. But um, this draft is speculated to be one of the deeper 
deeper draft pools, so they'll be able to get some talent in the draft. And um, I, I think the guys started to buy into Tockett's system towards the end of last year, and their their outlook looks pretty bright. I would expect them to be a sleeper team that it could be like this year's Colorado Avalanche. They could be the team that that just jumps off the <clears throat> jumps out of the gates and, and gets off to uh, a really good start and able to cement themselves a playoff position, possibly sneak into the back end of the playoffs next year. Uh, Vancouver Canucks current coach is Travis Green. Uh, I know he is one of, uh, I think he was a teammate of Trevor Linden's when he played in Vancouver, so a lot of familiarity there. Um, the quote-unquote boys clubs that exist in today's NHL. Um, it was his first year on the bench last year, so they're definitely going to give him some more time to develop. Um, they're going to go into a pretty heavy rebuild with the the Sedins both announcing that they've retired so um, bringing in a new core of, of talent to reinvigorate that fan base uh, with the Bo Horvats and the Brock Bessers taking up uh, leadership roles in that locker room I think that Travis Green has the belief of the locker room so I think that that they'll be they'll be pretty safe moving forward with it, with him on their bench. The Chicago Blackhawks, uh, Joel Quinville, is I, I think he's the longest tenured coach in the NHL right now. Um, with with his organization in Chicago, um, they did announce that they are keeping Quinville and Stan Bowman uh, at least through this off season. Um, I think Chicago this year may have misled their fans in the way that they worked their offseason last year, signing a bunch of veterans, but signing them to cheap contracts so that they could get some of the the heavier contracts um, off the books a little bit. And I think that Chicago is going to go into a, a bit of a retool mode, but they still have those core guys, the Duncan Keiths, Jonathan... Um, Wow, <clears throat> the Patrick Keynes and and Jonathan Taves in their lineup, so they'll still be a competitive team next year. I look for them to, to have a rebound year, and Quinville will probably be safe unless something disastrous happens next season. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers' uh, current coach is Todd McClellan. Um, they have already announced that he is safe for next year, so he'll still be their coach next year. Uh, they ended up, I think, 7th or 8th in the draft. So they'll, they'll be able to pick up some more talent um, on an already pretty talented lo roster with Connor McDavid and um, Dreisaitl in there. Um, maybe they'll look at buying out uh, Lucic contract, but that's a, a pretty hefty buyout if they have to do that, but McClellan's going to be the coach there next year, and I, I think, much like Quinville that I spoke of before, it would take a pretty disastrous result for Edmonton to get rid of McClellan. They did make some front office changes, um, so we'll see how that affects his tenure moving forward. Uh, next up is the Calgary Flames. Uh, they did let uh, Glenn Gulletson go uh, in the offseason and signed Bill Peters of the, the Carolina Hurricanes. So they have decided that, um, that Peters' system works well with the, the youth they have up there. And they should be pretty much cemented for the next few years. I know the Brian Burke... Um, step down as GM so they'll have a new GM in place as well and um, I think that Calgary is a team that's right on the edge of, of being very successful so and, and I think it was uh, 
a fair decision for Peters to leave Carolina to take the Calgary job. He's, I believe he's an Alberta native, so he wanted to go back up there close to home. And Carolina, with the new ownership group, uh, new GM, give them a chance to basically do a full reset on their, their front office and their coaching staff. And I think it was a, the best decision for both teams there to make that decision. Um, Dallas Stars, uh, Ken Hitchcock was their coach last season. He decided to retire in the offseason. I think he took a position in uh, in their personnel office. So he's, he's going to be working with them in an advisory capacity. So... Um, so Dallas will be will be seeking a new head coach. And like I said, a lot of these coaching decisions, especially the vacancies, a lot of that will depend on how things shake out from the playoff teams and whether or not they decide to keep their, their coaching staff intact. I know there's a lot of speculations of uh, Randy Carlisle as to whether he'll stay in Anaheim. Um, Barry Trotz will be an interesting situation coming out of Washington as to whether or not they're able to to get past the Penguins in the second round. That could have a large influence as to whether or not he gets a new contract in the offseason. So those guys would be candidates to consider if, uh, if those teams decide to go different directions um, pending playoff failure. Uh, next team is the St. Louis Blues. Uh, their current head coach is Mike Yo. Um, I know he was the former head coach in Minnesota Wild, spent some time in the Pittsburgh Penguins organization. Um, that's where he was recruited as a, a candidate for the Minnesota job. Um, I think he is pretty safe in St. Louis. Again, they missed out on the playoffs on the final day of the season. Um, I think he's taken them to the playoffs both years that he's been their head coach uh, and then missed out by one point last year. I think they're pretty confident in his ability to rebound the team next year. Um, St. Louis is a, a pretty a team that's steeped in, in tradition. They're generally a very competitive team, always in the playoff hunt. And... Um, and I think Mike Yo will keep them in that same going in the same direction next year. I think the trade at the deadline that sent uh, the trade with Winnipeg. Uh, the name's escaping me right now. I can't remember. It'll come to me in a minute. But but that trade that basically made it look like St. Louis was kind of not going to make a run of the playoffs, and then and then Mike Yo kept them competitive all the way to the end of the season. I think that shows that the locker room has a very good belief in in the way Mike Yo coaches and they're probably going to be right back in the playoff mix next year. I think next year could be a year um, especially in the Western Conference where we see a lot of playoff turnover from teams that made the playoffs this year and the teams that could be competing for the playoff spots next year. We might see as many as four, five, or six teams that didn't make the playoffs this year be in a spot where they could make the playoffs next year with the right coaching staff and the right development of the players that they have in place. And I think um, that, you know, we could see that come to fruition. Maybe not in the East as much, um, I, I think the teams that miss the playoffs in the East have a lot more work to do than they do in the West. I think the Western teams are a bit more uh, competitive outside of the playoffs that, for the teams that didn't didn't make it. So that's kind of my thoughts on the directions of the teams that missed the playoffs um, and what I think they might do coaching-wise. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, is there any potential candidate, somebody that stands out that might be the next coaching gem, kind of like the next Phil Housley or, or Rick Tockett, highly touted candidates? I haven't really <clears throat> done a lot of research on the 
the playoff staffs, the, the current staffs that are in place that might be candidates. Um, <clears throat> let me know what you guys think. Um, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're just passing through. Uh, leave a comment in the, in the comments below. And uh, we'll see you next time.